like for everybody? Um, I think it's been good. You know, it's been good competition uh, on both ends, you know, offense, defense, uh, even special teams. You know, we had some drills going going against the guys uh, in the special teams drills. So I think it's just been really solid competition back and forth. You know, we're kind of building those building blocks for what we're trying to see. And you see, like, come out today versus, like, last week, the first couple of days, guys a little bit uh, better in shape, you know, not as gassed, myself included. Um, so I think it's, it's it's a lot of good progress being made. Did you just add to help things up a little bit after coming off a day off? Oh, uh, for sure. You know, I think everybody's already excited. Um, you know, I tell people all the time, like, you know, I, I make the joke, like, oh, we're going to really see who can hit now. Like, you know, it's a National Football League. You you probably wouldn't make it this far if you didn't know how to tackle them. So um, I think it's just, you know, that next phase, that next step to getting to where we're trying to go. So it's just elevating and, you know, it's one more extra thing that you got to do. But you really, you practice the same way. The only difference is now you get the guy in front of you, you can thud him up. So I don't think it really changes the mentality or anything like that, kind of just the finish. So As you guys get out here and work more together, how do you see the personalities meshing and, and emerging, generate energy in those types? Oh, you just see guys being themselves. You know, there's different type of leaders on this team. And I think, you know, they all lead in their own way, you know, from Derek to KB, you know, to Ryan, myself, you know, Jeff. Everybody kind of has their own style of how they lead their group and their unit. And, you know, it all comes together. And, you know, people picking each other up, uh, feeding off of each other's energy. So, I, like I said, I just think it's really good back and forth competition, which is, you know, right now, a weekend, that's all you really can ask for. And that's what you want to see. Um, obviously, like, mistakes are going to be made things like that, you got stuff to build off of, but it's, it's been really good so far. You mentioned the leadership aspect. How much of a leadership role have you kind of embraced and taken? It's early, but over the last couple days of campus, specifically with that, that group, your position group? Um, you know, I've embraced it really since the first day I got here. I knew that I was a part of, you know, just me as a person that I felt like I could bring to my room and, and help to this defense and this team. Uh, so it's not, I think it's something that you can't really like you know, you can't fake it. You know, you, you got to be yourself and be authentic, and that's what I try to do. And I think it kind of shows itself. You know, leading by example, helping the guys out, coaching the guys up, even the guys who are across from us. You know, going against the running backs, whether it's one on ones, whatever, and you know, letting them know, hey, I played it this way because I saw you do this, or vice versa. So you know, it's just allowing us all to like sharpen our tools. Because when the season starts, I'm not trying to beat him. I'm trying to beat somebody else. So you know, I want him to be as good as he can be. And I know they want me to be as good as I can be so we can go into the season and, you know, get some wins. How do you feel your embrace being able to, you know, be the play caller on the defense? Um, you know, I embrace it. I think it's even in San Francisco, uh, me and Fred, Fred had the green dot, but in practice, you know, we both had to use it. And I was, you know, the backup middle linebacker, so I would have to call the stuff as well. And when Fred went down during the season uh, in the last four years that I've been there, I was always doing it. So it was something that wasn't new to me at all, I think. You know, just from, I guess, you guys' perspective, you guys don't really, like, understand or know that. Like, you know, in a, in a real game, yeah, it's only one person. But in practice, you know, whoever's the backup, like even right now, uh, Jack um, Gibbons and uh, Monty Rice, they have the mics as well. So, you know, you have to make the call. So it's something that, you know, I've already been comfortable with doing. But obviously, you know, when you got the green dot and you're expecting to have it, you know, going into the season, you know, it's, a, it's a good feeling. And, you know, I embrace that, that role. I'm good at those big guys lined up in front of you. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, not just the front seven, but even, you know, the back seven, I think the whole defensive unit, but you talk about that D-line, like, like I told people all the time, like, I've been real blessed, you know, I've been with two really, 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 really good defensive lines, you know, with San Francisco and now obviously being here, so it really feels the same for me, I don't know anything different, you know, like, all the stuff that I'm seeing out there right now is exactly what I was seeing for the last four years. So I, I, I'm just grateful to be a part of that, which is a part of why I felt like it would be good for me to come here seeing that uh, from the from the D-line. So. I think it's just, like I said a little bit earlier, like it's a National Football League, you know, like for like Oklahoma drills, first day, it's like high school. I, I, I just see it as like some little league stuff. Like at the end of the day, we're in the NFL. It's as high as it gets. This is the best of the best. Your technique, everything that you do, you know, with or without pads for me has always been the same. I'm taking the same approach, the same technique, 
only difference is the finish. You know, now, as opposed to two days ago, I was finishing just punching or moving out the way, letting them run, whereas now I can finish, get a good thud up, and then still just move out the way and let them run. So I think, you know, it's just the same intensity. Like, we don't really change how we, how we do things. It's just the finish at the end is what you change. So obviously you're, you're able to be a little bit more physical, um, but overall I think it's just – the same mentality for a lot of guys. How would you expand on Jack as a running yeah. partner and how you view kind of the two of you together, how, how that puzzle fits? Uh, I think right now, you know, it's just a, uh, different guys rotating in and out, um, you know, trying different things. And Jack, I think, is coming along really well, really smart player, um, and really just, you know, trying to feed off of each other, help each other out when we're on the field. And I think it's just been good so far, you know, and even other guys rotating in. So we kind of like, like I said, it's, it's the first week of training camp, so you really don't have – watch out, man. So you really don't have, like, anything set in stone, but it's, it's been good so far. How about Monty? Same. Which I think, I think it's all the same. Monty is – like, I tell him all the time, he reminds me of that old-school linebacker. He loved to hit. Um, you know, he loves to make plays in the run game. And, you know, I think he's just overall a solid player. And we're just trying to build off of that and, you know, continue to grow. So I think that's the biggest thing for everybody. We're, we're all doing the same thing, trying to get better every day. Signing autographs over there and taking pictures with the fans. How much have you kind of embraced Nashville? I feel like you finally settled in. Oh yeah, for sure. I think um, you know the fun part is is like it is hot. You know, it's training camp, and to be out here, you know, this is my job. I love what I do, but it's my job. And you know, all those kids, I, I told the guys when we were breaking it down. Like I remember being a child. Like if I could come to an NFL practice and see NFL players as you know an eight year old, nine year old, ten year old, like it would have made my whole world. So for me. Those type of things I think are always important because you never know who you're like motivating or you know who you're inspiring by just signing an autograph or a shirt that they probably won't fit a year from now. So I think it's just special, you know, and I embrace the whole city of Nashville. Like it's closer to home for me, you know, being from Tampa, and you know, I, got, I like that Southern feel. I don't know if I can get with the cowboy boots and the hats and stuff, but uh, everything else has been really good. The first kid, uh, the first NFL player you met when you were a kid? I never met one. Really? Um, yeah, I. I never, ever, I never knew nobody that went to the NFL. I never knew nobody that even went to college. So for me, um, you know, I had to kind of see something that wasn't there, that didn't exist. Um, so it was tough for me growing up. So I think that's why it, is, it, it, it motivates me a little bit more to, you know, do things like that because I know what I didn't get. And I would never want somebody to be here and me be here and, you know, take five minutes, extra minutes out of my day to just sign an autograph. And, like that could change somebody's whole life. So. Where did you grow up? Uh, Tampa, Florida. That's good. Thank you. Thanks. 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 How, how does it feel to be kind of the last man standing from the 22-0 line? <laughs> oh, it's a different feeling. I'm feeling good, man. I like the new group of guys I'm with. Still keeping contact with my old guys, too. So it's a good feeling. How hard is it, Aaron, when, when continuity is such a big part of every offensive line? You really start. You know, four or five new guys, how hard is it to build that, do you think? Um, I don't feel like it's tough because, like, we are professionals here. And so, almost everybody across the line and played before other than Peter. He knew here, but we getting them along pretty well. So, like, it, it's been good. Like, we've been here since the spring, been bonding. So, I feel like we're pretty tight now. You mentioned you keep your track, keep it to the old guys still. You got a chance here from Ben Jones before camp and wishing you luck or anything like that? Oh, yeah. Ben, uh, man, Ben, like, we – on Instagram, shooting each other DMs every day, like just funny videos, just chopping it up, little stuff, little tips here and there. So, yeah, I'm what's still he, talking to my guy. What's he tell you and maybe how much impact he, has he had on your career? Um, he had a big impact on my career. Like just me coming in as a rookie, like looking up to him, like look how he carried himself, like how he, like his knowledge of the game. You know, everybody know Ben Jones was a guru in this football. He could be a coach. So just picking his brain and just, he, he gave me little pointers here about center like reading defenses and all sort of things like that. How good is it to have a front like that? You know, watch you guys one on one, you know, you and Simmons and Arden Key, everybody. How good is it to have that group to kind of iron sharp as iron? Nah, that's that's great. As you said, iron sharp as iron. So like just being there to compete with the best of the best. Like Jeffrey Simmons, he won the top defense lineman in the league. And I say Arden Key he up there as well. So like just having them guys and us going back and forth, just getting the best out of each other. That's that's amazing. It's a blessing. Do you think, like, looking at Arden Key's length and his speed, Simmons' power, then 
Archer just a blend of everything. We were like, you can go on and on. Yeah. Does that really give you an opportunity to just see pretty much everything you're going to encounter this season? Right, right. That's exactly what it is. Like, you get to see, you get the power, you get the speed, you get the finesse. Like, you're getting best of both ways you see it and everything you're going to see. Are your snaps the same to all three guys, or is there any alteration for any of them? Oh, one more time. Your, your snaps, mm -hmm. are they the same for all three quarterbacks, or do you have to alter anything for anything? No, nah, we pre we keep it pretty consistent. Like, we want to all be on the same page. So, no matter what center out there or what quarterback out there, we all want to be consistent and on the same page. Aaron, how much do you weigh now? Same, might like, be the same, 285, 290. I stay between that range. Did you try gaining weight in the offseason, or what was that like when you um, – I've been up there before. Like, I didn't touch 300 before. When I was in college, it was uncomfortable. I done been at 295 before. It's just a comfortable weight for my body and just my frame. How's Skaronski doing? Uh, you working there beside of him. What, what are you seeing out of him that uh, maybe he's good, maybe he's a little work, whatever? Um, Skronk, he he's actually like ahead of his game, I would say. Like, he got good power, good base, like pass pro wise, run game. like. He's a talented young dude. He always got like some little things to work on, but he, he's a solid player. What's he like off the field? How's getting to know him going? <laughs> Skrunk, he's he a cool guy. He's pretty chill. He's pretty laid back, talking here and there, but he's a chill guy. Aaron, in the process of building up the offensive line with chemistry, how important are the next couple of weeks with the pads on to take it into the next step? Uh, it's a very important because, you know, you just got to get that real feel, like being in the pads, getting that t contact again. So. That's a big part. Is he was carrying uh, four shoulder pads on himself as he's walking out the field and carrying four helmets. You guys kind of giving him a little rookie treatment? Absolutely. Over? That's all the rookies. It's not even just Pete. It's Pete, OJ, Jalen. That's, uh, that's their job. Is it easier to be a, a little bit uh, lighter center than it was to be a little bit lighter guard? Is it, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Because, you know, at guard, like, it's that contact every play. You got the three tags, two eyes, like, you're getting there every play. So when you're out there in the middle, like, you kind of assisting people. You got your big nose guards or whatever, but you pulling the ball, so you setting the tempo for everything. So it's, it's a little different. Being a little lighter, is it easier sometimes to slip through the crack and get, the sec get to the second level on that linebacker? Absolutely. I got, like, that's one of my pros about me. Like, I'm fast. So, yeah. Coach said it would take 35 five-year-olds to tackle Derrick Henry in the 10-yard box. 35 five-year-olds. To tackle Derrick Henry in the box? In the box, in your box. I don't think it'd take 35. I think it'd take about a good, like, 200, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it'd probably be, yeah, 35 not enough. When you were five, would you have taken on that task? I would. <laughs> I'd, I went at them ankles. So, yeah, so. <laughs> you guys ever get tired of the offense? A lot of usually do the job. Go back to the huddle. The defense seems to have a little more chatter on their side. You, you guys ever get tired of hearing from the from the end? <laughs> What's the conversation? Uh, no, I love to talk. I love to talk. Like, they, we just pushing each other. It's a little, little trash talk. Ain't nothing wrong with it. I enjoy it. I talk. I go back and forth with Jeff all day. So. What about Arden? Has he brought something extra to it as well? Oh, yeah. Arden, like, he high energy. Like, he got that juice, like, all day, every day. That's just Arden. So, yeah, he for sure got that juice. He talk a little trash here and there. He joke around. But he, he going to go out there and compete every day. We know all about who the best talkers on defense are. Who are the best talkers on you guys to say? The best talkers? Trash talkers? Yeah. Uh, I don't see too many people trash talkers. I say it'd probably be me. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Thanks. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here. I'm one of us. Just so, it's, just so we don't get fined, right? Uh, Mike, obviously this is the first day in pads, but uh, how's the chemistry on the offensive line coming? And, 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 and do you have a timetable? Uh, even even if you're not going to share it with us, of when you'd like to settle in those st those first five. Uh, no, don't don't really have anything. We'll kind of know when we've figured it out and we work through the games and you know a lot of practices. We're just a few days in here. Um, you know, looked like there were some good things there today. We'll see. Take a look at the tape, but uh, you know, felt like there was good energy throughout the practice on both sides, special teams drills. So. I thought we practiced with some speed. I thought there, you know, we stayed up. We tried to take care of each other, and you know that's what we have to do. Come back tomorrow and do it again. Well, kind of managing the ups and downs of this kind of work you started. How do you think you did today? I thought there were some good balls. I thought there were some good decisions down in the red zone. I thought he delivered the ball with some accuracy. Tried to push it down the field, and um, you know, worked the concepts that we had going in today, just in the red zone. So, 
you know, take take it day by day. There's going to be some good days. There's going to be some bad days, and you know, learn from them and, and keep progressing. But I thought, you know, offensively, at least from the the quarterback position, we got you know some pretty good work today. They were able to extend some plays or you know take off and run in, in the red zone, which. You know, we have to be great at defensively as these quarterbacks that we play against are athletic. And, you know, the, the reward for, for taking off in a red zone is, is, is a touchdown. So, you know, we have to be great on our rush lanes and be able to affect the quarterback, but, you know, not, not you know, give up lanes where Malik took off today and Ryan took off once too. Tight, tight spaces of the red zone may be favorable for his quick release, Will? Um, you know what I mean? I, I hope that the accuracy and, and the decision making you know, being on time, uh, and, and then certainly the, the the release. Anytime that you can, you know, get rid of the football and make it accurate, uh, that that's always going to help. Ralph Jaden Peavy is one of the award winners this offseason. Just kind of what's he done differently this year? Well, I just, I think he's just moving better. Another year of development and understanding what the NFL game is. He's an intelligent player. He knows all the spots across the front from base and nickel and. Um, Understanding how to use his length, he's such a long player. Be able to use his length without raising up, uh, and I think physically he's he's better. He's better than where he was last year, so I think that helps. And you know, he's out there, so that means he's you know, most likely improving and, and trying to develop a role. How much does the caliber defensive line you have, like as good as what that group is, how much does that help you as you're evaluating the offensive line and, and getting them ready? Well, I mean, I think that that group. You know, again, we're not crowning anybody, but, you know, they work hard. And I think they're well coached. I think there's some talent and, you know, we, we, we hold, a high, hold them to a high standard. So, you know, they're just working like everybody else. Um, you know, I think some of the matchups you, you look at and, you know, again, we're not game planning for, for Jeff or we're not game planning for anybody right now. We're just trying to install. And um, so you're able to, to evaluate you know, how competitive they are against starting caliber football players. How do you differentiate Gibbons and, and Rice? In, in, in what regard? I'm, uh, just be more specific here, just trying to work how, through how are, a competition. Yeah, how are the games different, strengths and weaknesses? No, I don't think there's right now they're just trying to um, develop a role in this football team. Obviously, you know. Gibby's a, got a little bit more length. Monty's probably a little bit, you know, you know, quicker and maybe a little faster. But other than that, they both have, um, you know, been productive this, this thus far. And I thought they both showed up today. You know, I saw Monty show up on the sideline, being able to run and and go chase down Tajay, um, you know, on a run. So he showed up. And again, that's the play speed that we we're talking about at that times last year uh, about being around the ball and flying and. Um, that that's good to see, and so that we'll keep you know keep having them in a competition, and know that they'll continue to both get better. President Matt seems to be catching passes more out front, not letting him get into his body so much to give him a chance to turn up field and run. Is that something that maybe was a point of emphasis this offseason for him? It's a point of emphasis for everybody to catch the ball out in front of your eyes and not let it get into your body, and you know, where it bounces off a shoulder pad and into a safety's arm. So they hear that ad nauseum, you know, from me and. Um, you know, talking about doing that and allowing Racy to, you know, run through the catch and things like that and body control and staying on your feet and doing all those things after the catch. Your last thing you said after Ross has got his hand on a ball and it felt good today. Has he been everything you expected him to be since he's been in Certainly the- been, you know, having some consistency and a great understanding of what we're trying to do and the different coverages. Um, and yeah, keep working and, you know, jumped in there, helped us out on punt return. And I'm going to make sure that all those you know, corners understand that they're going to play defense. They're also going to have to have a role on special teams. And, you know, we'll have to have that from them. But, you know, I think he's been consistent each and every day and understanding, uh, you know, what, what we're asking him to do in each of the coverages. Like players mentioned that they didn't want to get in any scruffs or, or fights because they'll be sent straight to the sand pit. Is that something you kind of address ahead of time? And did you like that that battle? And yeah, I mean, I think it's lazy. I think it's, you know, that's dumb. It hurts the team. You know, you get thrown out of a game. And so you throw a punch in the game, they're going to throw you out of the game. New York's going to review it. I mean, they're going to remove you from the game. So we might as well practice those things now, um, you know, and try to make it an emphasis that 
go as hard as you want. Don't throw a punch. Don't be the second guy. They are going to see the second guy or retaliate and be a 15-yard penalty. So but you might as well practice the way we're hopefully going to play. You preach compete on a daily basis. How much have you enjoyed so far watching the two young quarterbacks compete on the field? Did you say corner or quarter? Quarter. Well, play. yeah. Um, I, I think it's been great. You know, I think it's been great. I think that they, you know, all push each other and and again you see them getting excited for each other and you're allowed to do that and, and still compete and still want uh, to, to try to win the, the competition so uh, I think they both have done some some really good things there's some plays that, that both of them would like to have back um, again one day isn't going to make or break anything but hopefully we can come back tomorrow uh, with, without a script and put the ball down and see how they function and operate and move through the different situations that we give them tomorrow and see how they lead their unit, whether it's the second group or the third group, and they'll both have opportunities with, with each of those, those different groups. So um, I, I just I like where both of them are at. It's, it's, I guess it's nice to have two young guys here that you can develop and work with. Mike, how is Will doing in terms of putting touch on certain passes, and how much of a kind of distance has that you guys? I mean, when he needs to, to throw it in all, you know, a little harder, we want him to throw a little harder when, when he needs to, to layer the football. Then we want him to layer it and not just layer it for the sake of layering it. I, there was a ball yesterday where he should have ripped and he layered and Treshawn made a hell of a catch. But you know, I don't think you know, I think you kind of have to know when you need to put it on there with some heat and when you need to take a little bit off. Mike, we see the two hours out here when you're with everybody. What do you try to? What are the most important things you want to try to accomplish on the other hours? Continue to move through with the installation. You know, tomorrow we'll we'll start to, you know, we'll give them a script tonight and, and understand that. You no, know, excuse me, give them a game plan like a mock game plan. Like, okay, this is what we're going to have up. You know, we've got five days in installation. Not all those plays will be up. Go home, study these plays. These are the plays in the first and second down. Different personnel. So this will be our third down package. Um, and, and starting to understand that and see how they respond tomorrow to to not having a script and looking at it in the morning and knowing, oh, I got this play, I'm lining up here. Uh, I think this is going to be a, a huge day for us that we, have, we had today, which was great, and then tomorrow you know, taking that next step of, of going out and just playing the game, coming from the sideline. Uh, th that's what we'll probably do tonight, and then obviously moving on to the other situations later in the week. You mentioned one of the Trey Sean catches. He's one of the young guys that's been showing up for you. Been here. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's just have to get open, catch the ball, and he's done that. Uh, he's shown up different different team periods, and you know, again, playing that position as a young player, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of details, a lot of alignments and motions and shifts and things that that we try to do. So, the more that they can understand that and get lined up, it gives them a chance to execute. How do you think Will Levis has done in terms of making a mistake and then going over it, whether it's with the film or at the meeting room? and then coming back out and working on whatever the mistake was the first time. I mean, I think everybody does that, you know, and that's what we ask them to do, whether it's, you know, Ryan today had one behind, you know, um, D hop. And so, you know, he'll come out tomorrow and, and spot a couple of those throws up to, to DeAndre. Um, I, I, Will's going to do the same thing with the things that, you know, Timmy and Charles and Pat will talk to him about this afternoon, uh, and, and Malik will do the same thing. So I think they all, you know, everybody I think is coachable. I think that's something that I love about this team is that they are coachable. They, we're going to try to coach as much as we can and then, you know, get them to the game and let them go play. With Chris Harris, it seems like, like after every play, whether good or bad, like it's pulling a guy aside and, and, and talking with him. How have you seen the secondary kind of evolve or, or even get better you know, since he's got here? Well, again, this is a, this is a players' league. You know, this is ultimately a players' league. I love Chris's energy. I think that they are coming together as a unit, which I really love. I think that uh, you know, I've seen development. I've seen you know that connection with with Christian and uh, Roger. Uh, so that's that's important, and I think that's been something that's been been great. And always finding ways to teach. You know, love the energy and. And love the way that, uh, that that those guys on the back end, with Book and 
Justin Hamilton and, and obviously Chris. Um, you know, you you see them all being able to grab guys. That's that's the beauty of having all those guys there that they can all grab guys. Some young guys, Jay Ham meets with the young guys, you know, in the morning to get them prepared. So I think they're off to a good start. How many five-year-olds would it take to tackle Derrick Henry? Uh, <laughs> I don't even know if they could. How many kids would die in the process? I would imagine. I don't know. Do I need to give you a number? Like a le legitimate number? What kind of how, What's the area? Is it confined space? I think he's maybe standing, starting to move. Within like they you, have you like five yards. Okay, so let's say he's got a ten yard wide space. It would probably take thirty five. You want to try it? Test it out? Yeah, can we try it? Sure, as long as you're one of the five-year-olds. <laughs> that might be counted as uh, child abuse. <laughs> Thank you. We had some Aziz out here, and we talked about his leadership before, but just from an on-the-field, like, technique execution standpoint, what's he shown you so far? Well, uh, good play speed. Good good play speed. I think that, uh, you know, again, he's got good, good ability to, to break on the football and, and, and run, and I think that his, his speed and his – is going to hopefully create some some turnovers for us. Um, I think he's just got a good overall. You know, I mean, he's been effective blitzing when we've sent him so far. Uh, and, and a lot of these, you know, some of these techniques are probably new, and some of the defenses are probably new compared to where, you know, he was was coming from. But uh, he's been open to learning them and and receptive to that. Since you're in a seemingly good mood to answer his question, I'm not telling you. I'm ruining it by saying that. No. All right. <coughs> Jersey numbers that, that guys wear. You wore 50 at New England. I think you wore nine, uh, 93 maybe in Pittsburgh. I had like five numbers in Pittsburgh. I had whatever one that they gave me. How attached were you to a Jersey number? And did it mean anything in particular? Uh, at 50 probably meant so. it, it only means something if you do something in it, I guess, or you're effective player or you're in it. Literally, I went through like three numbers in Pittsburgh. I, you know, I mean, like my poor grandma couldn't keep track. She didn't know I still played for the Steelers anymore. <laughs> I said, no, I changed my number. She's like, oh, I didn't know you still played. And I was like, yeah, I, I went from like 96 to 56. To, you know, I mean, I, every guy that came in, I'd take like, I'd be like, oh yeah, I'll change. Five hundred bucks, I'll take it. Just you can have it. See you guys. Thanks. 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 Thanks.